Hello, Internet. My name is Ayla Tesler Mabe, and I have a confession. There may have been a time in my life where I left pretentious and goofy comments online. I'm the only 13 year old in the world who listens to real music. Music nowadays is straight garbage. Sad. But I've now grown older and wiser and realized that there is some incredible music coming out nowadays. As the year is wrapping up, I wanted to make a list and teach you the top guitarists of 2022. Now let's learn this classic rock and roll type riff from Sugar Soaker by Panic at the Disco. First things first, you're gonna play an E power chord. I mean, technically it's not E, but let's just pretend the capo is the open strings. So, second fret of the A string and D string, and open low E string. And then, we're gonna play an A power chord. So, move those fingers down a set of strings, or bar with your index finger, whatever you want. Basically, you want to cover the second fret of the D string, G string. Though when I listen to the song, I sometimes hear that second fret of the B string come in as well. So I think you could play it either way. I don't think it really matters all that much. Then we have this movement. Once again, you play that A power chord. Then you move to a D power chord. How do you play that? Well, if you know your D major chord, it's essentially just that, but minus the high E string. So you have the open D, second fret of the G string, third fret of the B string. And then you come back to that A power chord. Now we have this. And then you wanna play the third fret of the low E string and do a bluesy pull down bend before landing again on that power chord. So you play the riff four times. And after you play it the fourth time, uh, when the verse starts, you know, the vocals begin, you let that E power chord ring out for seven beats. One, two, three, four, two, two, three. And then there's more than one guitar part in the song, um, but if I listen very closely, it sounds like at least one of the parts, sometimes, slides down from the octave on beat four of the second bar. And then you just slide into the riff. Now there's one last detail we're missing. Those muted strums, because that really just brings the flavor, you know? So after that E power chord, two muted strums down up. And then after that A power chord, there are three muted strums. Down, up, down. And then from there, you play the rest of the riff. Ooh, that went out of tune. Ooh. there. If you want to keep developing your skills and learn the techniques needed to play these riffs, you can head on over to guitario.com slash trial to get a free seven-day trial of the hundreds of lessons we got. Check it out. Up next, we have Sacrifice by The Weeknd. First thing you want to do is tune your low E string all the way down to B. So how do we play this riff? So the first thing you want to do is play 2nd fret, 4th fret, 2nd fret on the A string. And then you want to get this muted ghost note strum just by covering the frets with your fretting hand and then picking. And then with an upstroke, you want to play that open low E string. And Keep in mind this whole riff is very, very palm muted and percussive. And then we have this phrase. Five, two, five, four on the A string. And we have some more muted strums going on. Where once again, you play a ghost note on the A string. And then that 
low E string again. So let me play that whole phrase slowly. So you may have noticed the fourth time is slightly different. This is how it goes. Starts the exact same, but now we play the fourth fret of the D string, and then second fret, fifth fret, fourth fret on the A string. And then once again play ghost note, open low E. without saying that I have to include a riff by the Riff Masters, King Gizzard, and the Lizard Wizards. We're playing an A power chord twice. Then a G power chord, back up to A. Now we have this trill on the G string between the fifth fret and the seventh fret. So I'm just repeatedly hammering on and pulling off. And the next part sounds like this. Open low E string, G power chord, once again playing A twice. G, A. Now we have this fun riff on the D string. Play it open, hammer onto the first fret, pull off. And then, play the third fret of the A string and pull off to the open string. <laughs> and we end the riff by playing open low E, G power chord, and then it repeats. Here's an extremely cool riff from Lie 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 by Marcus King. Start by playing the 7th fret of the D string, and then 3rd fret, 5th fret on the A string, and then do the same thing on the low E string. And now, on the D string, you play 5, 6, 7, 5. You play it three times, the very last time through. Uh, so you just walk up five, six, seven, and play these two power chords. We're gonna play a G power chord with the third fret of the low E string. Open D string, open G string. And what you wanna do is put your index finger lightly on the A string so that it's muted. So we don't want it to ring out. What's hard about this is making sure you avoid the B string and the high E string. It's not the end of the world if they're in there, but you want to try to get this kind of sound. So you play that G power chord, and then a D power chord where you play the open D string, second fret of the G string, third fret of the B string. And that's the riff. Now I'll do so Bad Habit, if you've been on TikTok, you probably know it was an enormous hit. Really stretch those fingers. We have a very spread out C sharp major seven chord where you want to 
play that fourth fret of the A string, and then bar with your ring finger across the sixth fret of the D, G, and B strings. And inevitably, you'll end up covering that high E just because of the way fingers are shaped. <laughs> and then you want to reach all the way up to the eighth fret of the high E string with your pinky. And you play that chord five times, all down strokes. And then you play a C minor chord, barring with the index finger, fifth fret of the D string, fifth fret of the G string, fourth fret of the B string. Then we play this lovely A sharp minor 11 chord, playing the sixth fret of the low E string, sixth fret of the D string, sixth fret of the G string, and you want to be covering that fourth fret of the B string, but you can't really just put your finger on that fret because you have to use it to mute the A string as well. So you bar with your first finger, you're covering that fourth fret of the B string, but you're using the fingertip to mute the A string. want to play this C7 sus4 chord. What do I mean? Well, if you go back to that C minor chord, take your middle finger off, move your pinky to the sixth fret of the B string, and you play it twice. Lastly, this is my number one favorite riff of the year from the ending of Maybe It's My Fault by Willow. I'm just tuned down a half step. But that low E string is tuned down to D flat. So you start by playing the low E string, A string, and D string open, getting a cool power chord going. And then playing this octave, sixth fret of the D string and the ninth fret of the B string, and you of course want to mute the G string in between. And then we chug a few times on those three lowest strings. And this is the next part. You want to again play that octave, sixth fret, ninth fret. And then you slide down and play 4th fret, 7th fret, and of course, again, still muting that G string in between. And now this is what we have. So that last part, you're playing those three lowest strings again, and then you want to get a muted strum in there, super subtle, but I think it's an essential detail to add. And then on your upstroke, you want to play the second fret of those three lowest strings. And again, another muted strum, and then the three lowest strings. Put that all together, this is what it sounds like. This part is awesome. So, octave. 6th fret, ninth fret, and then the open low E string. And then you move that shape down to the 4th fret, 7th fret. Back up to that 1st shape. And then you slide from the 6th fret and the ninth fret up to the 7th fret and the 10th fret. And then this octave down here, 5th fret of the A string, and the 7th fret of the G string, and mute the D string in between them. Two more chunky chords at the bottom there with the open strings. Fret, seventh fret, open low E. Once again, going back to that first shape, 
then sliding up a half step, and then landing on ninth fret, twelfth fret. So now we have. Now the whole riff ends like this. So again, get a chunky chord with the three lowest strings twice, and then sixth fret, ninth fret, open low E, fourth fret, seventh fret, open low E. And we end by playing the first fret, second fret, third fret, covering the three lowest strings. And that's it. So there's my list. And let me know in the comments which of these riffs you dug the most or which great 2022 riffs I may have missed. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Turn it loud. Turn it loud. <laughs> Turn it loud. Ah!